Hi, my name is Christopher Mitchell, author of Using the TI-84 Plus, and welcome. Today, I'll be kicking off the first in a series of videos about using your TI-84 Plus CE for math, science, and more. This series of lessons is based off of the book Using the TI-84 Plus, available from the links in the description. Although it focuses on the TI-84 Plus CE calculator, you can use what you learn here with almost any TI-84 Plus family calculator. In this video, I'll teach you how to turn your calculator on and off, how to charge it, and how to do basic arithmetic. If you have the book, you can follow along in chapter two. Before you can use your calculator, you will need to learn how to turn it on and off, as well as how to charge it. The T84 Plus CE has a grid of 50 keys on the front, each key has a description written on the key that describes what it does, as well as small symbols above each key showing other operations that the key can perform. For example, the second key is blue, and the on key has the blue word off above it. What this means is that if you press second and then on, that it'll in fact turn the calculator off. Similarly, the X in green above the store key means that if you press alpha and then store, you'll get the character X on the screen. So as I showed you, to turn the calculator off, you press second and then on, which corresponds to off. When you want to turn your calculator back on, you simply press the on key. When your calculator first turns on, it'll probably be at the home screen, this area you see here. At the top is the status bar, which shows various modes your calculator is in. For example, here, I'll see floating point answers, so my numbers will have as many decimal points as possible. It's in real mode, so we can't deal with imaginary numbers. And it's in radian mode, so if we perform calculations on angles, we'll get answers in radians instead of degrees. If you want to charge your calculator, you simply plug a mini USB cable into the USB port on the side of the calculator. When you do so, the LED will light up orange, indicating that the calculator is charging. And when it's done charging, the light will turn green. In addition, on the front of the calculator in the status area, there's a small battery icon that shows the amount of charge currently in the calculator's battery. If it gets low, you'll receive a warning message indicating that you need to charge your calculator. Let's get started with some basic math skills. The home screen, this area all in white with the cursor blinking at the top left corner, is called the home screen, and it's where you'll perform most of the mathematical operations on your calculator. Like a regular four-function calculator, your graphing calculator can perform basic arithmetic. For example, you can press 2, the plus key, and then 3 in order to compute the sum of 2 and 3. In order to complete this computation, you need to press the enter key, which is equivalent to the equals key on simpler calculators. As you can see, the answer, 5, is written at the right-hand column. Similarly, you could do multiplication. For example, 7 times 12, enter, yields the answer 84. Your calculator also has division, subtraction, exponentiation, and other operations. For example, if we want to know what 3 times 3 times 3 is, or 3 cubed, we press 3, then the exponent key, and then 3 again. You can see a small 3 appears to the upper right of 3, indicating that 3 is being cubed. You can then press enter to get the result. 3 times 3 times 3, or 3 cubed, is 27. This fancy exponent 3 is called MathPrint, and it's a special feature of the newer TI-84 family calculators. However, it can be a little bit confusing. For example, say you wanted to cube 3 and then add 1. The answer would, of course, be 28. However, if you did 3 to the third plus 1, you would get 3 to the 3 plus 1, or 3 to the fourth which is not the answer that you want. That's instead 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. If you want 3 times 3 and then plus 1, you have to do 3 times 3. You'll see the small cursor is still flashing up at the top, indicating that you're still typing an exponent. If you press the right arrow key, your cursor will turn large again, indicating that you can now add 1 to this exponent, getting the expected answer of 28. Your calculator can also use exponents to group terms, as you would expect it to be able to. The two parentheses keys are used for grouping. For example, you could do 
2 plus 1, close parentheses, times 3, times 3, to get 3 times 3 times 3. Again, 27. Your calculator can, of course, perform square roots. So you press second, and then x squared, which, as you can see, has a small radical symbol above it, to get the square root symbol. You're now inside the square root, so everything that you type until you press the right arrow key will appear under the radical symbol. For example, we can do the square root of 2 plus 2 to get the square root of 4. And if we press Enter, we'll get the answer. Square root of 4 is 2. Similarly, we could take the square root of 4. Then outside of the radical, and notice that when I press the right arrow key, the radical shrank to just cover the 4. We can now multiply that answer by 8. So we'll get the square root of 4, or 2, times 8, which should be 16. And indeed, the answer is 16. You will sometimes want to edit equations you have previously entered on your calculator. For example, imagine that I had computed the sum of 2.45 plus 3.12 and gotten 5.57, but I wanted to edit this equation. There are two ways I can do this. First. I can press the up key to go to my previous computation. If I press enter, it'll paste this equation onto a new line and I can edit it before I compute the sum again. I could, for example, change this two to a three by simply typing three. It'll replace the two and now I have 3.45 plus 3.12. If I press enter, I'll get the answer 6.57 rather than 5.57. Another way I can get the previous computation is by pressing second and then enter, because the word entry is written above the enter key. Now, say I wanted to actually compute 33.45 plus 3.12 rather than 2.45 plus 3.12. If I simply type a 3 here, it'll erase the 3 and write another 3 over it. What I need to do is insert a new character. Above the delete key is the word ins for insert. If I press second and then delete, the cursor will change into an underscore which indicates that I can now insert characters. If I press 3, it'll insert a 3 before the other 3, rather than simply writing over it. I can then press Enter, and I get the sum of 33.45 plus 3.12. What if I wanted to instead delete something? Once again, I'll press 2nd, Enter, to get the previous equation. I'll move the cursor over to the 1 before the 2, and I can press the Delete key here. This will delete one letter from the screen, and now I have 3.2 rather than 3.12. Once again, I'll press Enter to compute the answer. Let's briefly touch on trigonometric functions. Your calculator can perform sine, cosine, and tangent, as well as with the second key, sine to the negative 1, or arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent. Remember that at the top of the screen, I told you the calculator shows a status area, including what angle mode you're currently in. Here, it's set to radian, indicating that my calculator will assume that I'm dealing with radian angles. For example, if I type the cosine of 90, and then close my parenthesis and press Enter, I'll get a number that doesn't correspond to the cosine of 90 degrees, but the cosine of 90 radians. If I instead compute cosine of pi, which is second, exponent, you can see there's a small blue pi above exponent, I'll get negative 1 because the cosine of pi radians, or 180 degrees, is negative 1. If I want to deal in degrees instead of radians, I'll have to go to the mode menu, which I can access by pressing the mode key. If I move the flashing cursor over to degree and press enter, degree will turn from black text on a white background to white text on a black background, indicating that it is now selected. You can see that there are a range of different options available in the mode menu to set how your, how your calculator does math and displays graphs. The book describes more about what all of these different options do. If you press second and then mode, which corresponds to quit, we're back at the home screen, except that now the status area displays degree instead of radian. If I repeat my computation of cosine of 90, now I'll get zero because the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. Similarly, I can try the cosine of 180 degrees and get negative 1. What if I wanted to get the sine of 45 degrees? If you've learned trigonometry, you know that that is equal to the square root of 2 over 2. So the answer is 0.707 and so on, which is roughly the square root of 2, 
We can actually double check this by computing the square root of 2, then press the right arrow to get out from under the radical, and divide that by 2. As you can see, it's the same answer, 0 0.707. We can also perform, say, a tangent of, since we're in degree mode, we want to do our tangent in degrees, so we can do 45 degrees, we get 1. What happens if we do the tangent of 90 degrees, which you may know is actually undefined? In this case, our calculator will give us an error domain, which means that there's no value of tangent of 90 degrees. We can simply press enter here to choose quit, which will take us out of this computation. Or if we move the cursor down to go to and press enter there, the calculator will take us to right where the domain error occurred, tangent of 90. If we change this to say 89, we'll get an answer because the tangent of 89 degrees is defined. A few final points you may be interested in. Your calculator contains many, many math functions. For example, if you press the math key, you'll see five separate menus that include various math functions that you can use. The math tab, which you can see highlighted on a black background there, contains various things including the minimum and maximum of functions, derivatives, integrals, cubic roots, x roots, and other options. The numeric menu lets you take the absolute value of a number, round a number, find the integral or fractional parts of a number. The complex tab deals with various functions available for complex numbers. The probability tab lets you generate random numbers or test uh, permutations and combinations. And the fractional menu lets you convert numbers between fractions and decimals. In addition, your calculator has context menus that are available on the home screen. You can access these with the F1, F2, F3, F4, and F5 keys. Since these are written in green, it means you need to press the alpha key before you can choose one of them. I've pressed alpha, now I'll press F1, and the frac menu comes up. This displays four different options dealing with fractions. If I press the right arrow key, I'll move to the func menu, which has some of the other functions we had seen in the math menu, including the absolute value of a number, the derivative of a function at a point, and a logarithm. From the matrix tab, you can choose a template to be able to enter, for example, a two by two matrix. And finally, in the Y vari menu, I could select one of the functions available in my current graphing mode. For now, I'll move back over to the func menu. I'll choose the abs, and I get the absolute value bars on the home screen. Inside these absolute value bars, I'll type negative 3.2. I've typed this key, this is the negative key, which is different from the subtraction key. If you want to perform the subtraction operation, you must use the subtraction key. But if you're trying to enter a negative number, you can only use the negative key. As you can see, I have the absolute value of negative 3.2. I'll press the right arrow to move out of those absolute value bars. And I'll press enter to get the absolute value of negative 3.2. As you'd expect, it's 3.2. This concludes the material in this first introductory video. Please check out the remaining videos, which will be up all soon if... Eh. This concludes the information provided in this first introductory video. Please check out the remaining videos in the series, which will teach you more advanced calculator skills. I also very strongly recommend you pick up a copy of Using the TI-84+, Plus, again available from the links in the description for this video. Today, we looked at some of the material that's covered in Chapter 2, Getting Started with Your Calculator, but there are many more things that this book covers. For example, how to manage your memory. We talked a little bit about performing basic calculations, but this book covers much more about that. You can also find more information about using different functions, about using overwrite and insert mode, about rounding numbers, as an example here of rounding a number, of using sine, cosine, and tangent, uh, a list of all of the different functions that you saw in the math menu, along with descriptions of what each of them do and how to use them, much more information about how to use that mode menu, and even how to use the calculator's solver function, which lets you solve equations or check answers. Thanks for watching, and I hope I'll also see you around at chemitech.net, where you could ask questions about using your calculator or about programming.